Okay, to go along with this unit on the immune system, I figured I should mention two diseases that are particularly good at evading the immune system and to describe just a little bit about how they're able to go about avoiding all of the systems we have in place to hunt down and seek out and prevent and destroy um, pathogens that enter our body. The first one's probably the most obvious and one you're probably most familiar with, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. What this basically does, and I have two great links here, so you're welcome to look at the description and click the links directly there. They mimic antigen-presenting cells by activating the macrophage and helper T cell CD4 receptors. So instead of an antigen, it actually injects its own RNA and three enzymes. HIV is actually what we call a retrovirus. It is taking RNA and it's transforming it into DNA, incorporating it within the macrophages T helper cells in the DNA. As a result, because the HIV virus, there's DNA is involved in the host cells, T helper cells, it's able to hide within the immune system and basically render the T helper cells as they replicate, basically rendering them helpless, we'll say, and not able to perform their function. So T helper cells replicate, destroys the cells, and leaves the immune system unable to mount response up to any foreign antigens. That's where you get the concept of AIDS. A variety of otherwise commonplace infections prove fatal. So if you're infected with HIV, it, the virus itself here is not what actually kills you because it's essentially knocking out or preventing T helper cells from performing their proper function. You're more likely to die from cancer or even the common cold because you lack a functional immune system. Another uh, great evader of the immune system uh, is tuberculosis. So specifically, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. This resists the cell-destroying enzymes and replicates in the macrophages of the lungs in particular. So when the immune system finally does respond, the bacterium is protected by a thick waxy wall. Here's come uh, examples of what it looks like. The immune cells surround the bacterium, walling it off, creating this tuberculae, but does not kill it. And it's a key part there. The bacterium becomes dormant until something acts to weaken the immune system. So it kind of can stay there and kind of hang out for a while. When the immune system becomes compromised, that's the time that it will start to replicate again, causing a new outbreak. This is why typically people need tuberculosis screenings uh, to be able to tell whether they're carrying uh, this particular um, pathogen, which can easily be hidden at times, but show itself during times of stress. So another quick short video here, a minute 41 seconds, you're welcome to take a look at regarding the CDC's uh, tuberculosis transmit and transmission here. So hopefully that was helpful in just giving you two examples of diseases that exist that are able to evade the immune system.